то мы стараемся будто не нервными, когда стреляют. У нас тут трясется все. This is what children say about life under constant bombardment. They're hiding in one of the surviving bomb shelters with their mothers, grandmothers and grandfathers. There are hundreds of those who couldn't escape from the city. They run out of food and medicine. Water has to be drained from the radiators. They are in despair, but they hope that they will be able to get out of this hell on earth. The military, which shares with civilians everything they have, is nearby. Time and time again they repel enemy attacks and try to make sure that these people survive. No one believes the occupiers. That is why I call on politicians from all over the civilized world to organize a green corridor and provide security guarantees for the immediate evacuation of civilians, wounded and the bodies of slain soldiers who must be buried with honors. This is the address of the commander of the Azov regiment, Denis Prokopenko. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky awarded him and the commander of the Marines, Volodymyr Baranyuk, who is also defending the city, the title of Hero of Ukraine, for doing everything to stop the occupiers together with their subordinates. Russians treat various other soldiers who are there differently, and you know it perfectly well. There are soldiers that they hate completely, and I do not believe that they will save their lives even if they promise. Mariupol has been completely surrounded for almost two months. Some districts of the city are occupied by the enemy. Until recently, Ukrainian forces were cut off from each other. But in mid-April, the Marines made their way to the Azov regiment. We teamed up with worthy fighters from Marine Corps battalion, real warriors, heroes who turned out to be true to the oath, faithful to the Ukrainian people and continue to defend the city. These are real men who have chosen the path of war. Conducted a successful operation with the Azov regiment, joined them. We have successfully regrouped and continue to perform combat missions. Our morale is strong. They stand side by side against the occupier. For every Ukrainian defender, there are six Russians. For each Ukrainian unit of equipment, several dozens units of enemy equipment. And even so, the Ukrainian military is destroying the opponent. According to Azov estimates, they destroyed 46 tanks, hit another 27, liquidated 69 infantry fighting vehicles and BMDs, and 30 armored personnel carriers. On their accounts are Russian armored vehicles, Typhoon, Rhys, Tiger, drones, planes and boats. Every three Every three hours the Ukrainians destroy one unit of enemy equipment, every hour they liquidate two occupiers. Tell me, is there one place in this world where there is such heavy and fierce fighting? Tell and try imagine how the military, who are fighting under constant enemy fire from tanks, artillery and airstrikes, feel. With each passing day there are less battles for the defenders of the city, but they bite into concrete, burst into the ground, go crazy to endure all this hell. But again and again they rise, reach full height and go to destroy the occupier, destroy the occupier who cannot be forgiven for all these crimes. The Russian occupiers do not leave attempts to destroy the defenders of Mariupol. Russian troops are firing from artillery tanks, multiple rocket launchers and aviation. For the first time since the beginning of the armed aggression, long-range bombers 2-22M3 bombed the city of Mariupol. 2-22M3 is a long-range strategic missile-carrying bomber. Invaders who cannot take Mariupol are waiting for such applications. They even tell their relatives about it. Трехтонные с 
Знаешь, да. какой там это будет взрыв, какой это все это будет? Писец просто. Сказали сравнять всю землю. The Russians are trying to justify their action by fighting against neo-Nazis, so they call the fighters of the Azov unit. The enemy propaganda machine also speaks of them, like this is a unit controlled by no one, which does whatever it wants in Ukraine, and this is a lie. In fact, Azov has been a part of National Guard of Ukraine for many years and is subordinate in particular to the command of the armed forces. Another popular myth dispersed by Russian propagandists is that symbol of the regiment is supposedly one of the symbols of Nazi Germany. But this is also a lie. In the subsection, they said more than once the letters I and N are combined in the symbol and they mean the idea of nation. Despite all the obstacles that have been on our way all eight years from the creation of unit and a ban of training with NATO instructors, a ban of supply of weapons, legends about Nazis, we are standing further. We will fight because Mariupol is Ukraine. They stand despite the fact that 95% of the city was destroyed by Russian troops. They are trying to save those who are left without water and shelter. Ruined buildings, bodies in the middle of the streets, graves along roads and near playgrounds. According to the military civilian administration, only about 20,000 civilians have already died in Mariupol. This is every 25th inhabitant. And the Russian authorities trying to hide it. They burn the bodies in mobile crematoria. They do not want the world to know about their next atrocities, as happened with Bucha and Durpin near Kyiv. The occupier wants to take Mariupol and move further. Whether they succeed depends on the defenders of the city, who are ready to fight till the end.